How we doing film fans? This is Let's Be Real with Brad. So today, I wanted to talk about the brand new Supernatural Horror Trilogy that has all been officially released on Netflix, and that is the Fear Street Trilogy. So before going into this video, this is going to be 99% spoiler free, as I will talk about some minor plot points from the beginning of each movie if I'm referencing them in any way, but nothing to spoil the movie at any point. So with that being said, let's head on over to the review. So the Fear Street Trilogy is based on the books of the same name that were written by R.L. Stein, and that is the biggest contributor for people wanting to check this out because it has R.L. Stein's name on it. In case you aren't familiar with R.L. Stein, he is considered one of the kings of horror, especially in the children's novel section. So now that the trilogy has been officially released, what did I think about it and how much did I enjoy it? And I have to say, I thought it was a pretty good trilogy that surprised me quite a bit. I wanted to review each of these movies week by week, but after watching the first one, I felt like I couldn't have a true concise review of it just because of the way it ends and the way it's structured and feeling like I have to see the other movies to somewhat understand it. So let's get right into the positives first and we're gonna be talking about the great use of the trilogy format. This is a great example that many studios try to emulate. This movie handles it so damn well that you almost need to watch these movies as a whole because each movie as you go along reveals much more figuring out some more secrets and reveals as we go along. But what I also love so much is that technically this movie starts from the future in the timeline order it would go three two one in chronological order so i think it's a great and unconventional way of telling these different stories that i was very nervous about after the first film because i didn't love it all that much but now seeing it all together i feel like the first one definitely makes way more sense and it had to bite some of the bullet of trying to explain all these different story and plot elements. These movies totally feel like that these stories were completely planned out because each movie adds an element to the last movie or even to the next installment. I loved how we were able to get so many different time periods from 1994 to 1978, all the way to 1666, which is such a big jump, but it all ties in together with all these characters and the two towns and all the different creepy and horror aspects. You truly understand every story element and why things happen the way they do by the end of the trilogy. I also really enjoyed that it took a lot of the homages that we have seen from other horror movies, especially from the 1994, which is basically Scream and Stranger Things. Then we go to 1978 and we get the typical Friday the 13th classic 70s slasher films and then we go to the 1600s and we get more of something like the witch but it does feel like its own thing and i think that's why the third one is definitely the strongest one of the trilogy my next positive is with the visual effects i was entirely impressed of how great all the visual effects looked there are times where the gore and the prosthetic makeup look so damn real i was just getting goosebumps while looking at it because it felt so creepy and disgusting to look at. There are moments where the CGI doesn't look all that great in just a few seconds of each movie, but it didn't bother me as much as because they were trying to do something cool and very interesting with this thing and didn't overly rely on it as a plot device. But all the gore in this movie and the stabbing and just seeing these bodies being decayed look so realistic. The next positive I have is with the direct direction. I think the direction here is truly awesome in this movie. I love how each of the actors in this movie do such a great job, especially being a younger cast, but I also think that some of the ways this movie is shot and brings so much tension and suspense to each scene. I felt like each movie got better in the direction of the apartment. As we get to the third movie, it felt like it all came together. My next positive is with the score. 
I enjoyed the score so much as it felt perfect to these kind of horror films that are paying homage, but they were also becoming their own style, their own thing of these witchcraft slasher movies that I thought was so fascinating and great to listen to. My next positive is with the acting. I thought the acting was pretty strong considering I didn't really know any of the actors in the movie. This was a make it or break it deal because if the actors were not that good in the movie and didn't give off some strong, compelling, and emotional moments in the movie, I definitely feel like this movie wouldn't be as interesting as each movie goes along. The key standouts to this whole trilogy is Kianda, Madeira, and Benjamin Flores Jr. who play brother and sister in the movie. They had such a great dynamic together and awesome chemistry. I love how these characters were written and developed as these movies went along, but I thought they were able to have such compelling performances and offer so much emotional tension all the way throughout. My last positive with this movie is the writing. I truly love exactly how they did this with being very unconventional in the way it was doing the storytelling. But the best thing about this movies is the characters. I feel like they were very well developed in each movie going on. I truly do like the characters in the second movie because I felt like we had this nice sister relationship going on that felt so strong as you knew exactly who these characters were and actually had a much deeper backstory than I was expecting. I also enjoyed how when we get to the second and third movie, they do go back to the present time because it is still technically a prequel slash sequel so it does move the movie along as we find out new things and I thought it added this almost like TV show-esque where after the second movie there's definitely a massive cliffhanger that you're like okay I can't wait for next week I want to see the next movie so let's get into the boatload of negatives this trilogy has and we're going to start with the horror I do think the horror in this movie is quite weak there are so many jump scares in this movie that just do not land but I almost feel like the jump scares weren't even trying to be scary as it is just all fake out jump scares every single time and I don't understand what the point of this was but it was getting very aggravating and the first movie definitely takes a toll on this as I found it so ridiculously annoying so much in that first movie that I was almost not enjoying it. My second negative involves the third movie and that deals with some of the characters from the movies that we've seen already go back to 1666 playing these people from that time era. Yeah, it's creative, but also it is very distracting because we don't know these characters full in depth. We just know these characters as the way they are. I don't know why they couldn't change them for each movie. So with having some of the main people show up, it became so distracting in the third movie and it took so long to get into. I just didn't think it was a great creative choice. My third negative is the pacing. I do feel like that these movies drag quite a bit in certain sections of the film. I know each movie definitely has different pacing issues as I think the third one is definitely the most interesting, the least boring, but number two does feel like it drags in that second act and the first one just drags in so many parts of that one. I do think these movies are way too long. It could have been a lot shorter. I understand they're trying to showcase this great story and some great twists along the way that did feel satisfying but I think a lot of it could have been cleaned up so overall the Fear Street trilogy was a pretty good trilogy that I had such a good time with I almost think these movies would have benefited so much if they were released in October during the Halloween season because I think they would have smashed the charts because they feel like the perfect Halloween movies to watch so I'm going to be ranking and rating every Fear Street movie and give an overall score of the trilogy so with number three is going to be fear street part one and i give that one a six out of ten number two is fear street part two and that gets a seven out of ten and the last one fear street part three gets an eight out of ten which all adds up to this trilogy being a very good seven out of ten rating so thank you guys for watching and i hope you guys hit that subscribe button leave a like if you want to and ring that notification bell so you never get to miss a new video <laughs>